nation of Ecuador is not going to take you that long to come across a billboard of one Marlon Chito Vera enters competition tonight only as the most decorated finisher in UFC Bantamweight history. Yeah, man, Chito Vera is a different guy. And I was on the coaching staff opposed to him on the Ultimate Fight in Latin America. And you could not tell that he would be this, but through his hard work, his dedication, his commitment to getting better, he has made himself into one of the best bantamweights in the entire world. He's a big guy for the weight class. Let's see how he fares tonight. It's amazing to think back to a time in his career when he was one and two in the UFC, fearful that he would be cut. And now he's one of the best bantamweights in the world, continuing his quest for a UFC world title. Sugar Sean O'Malley, and you can argue a lot of these people in the building tonight are here to see him. You can argue, though, this is his stiffest challenge in the UFC. I believe so. I believe this is the toughest one. And I know he's fought Piotr Jan, the former champion. I know he's fought Pedro Munoz. But this opponent tonight is going to push him in ways that he has not been pushed before. Does Sean O'Malley use his fantastic footwork, his speed, and his mind to set enough traps to get the victory? I guess we'll see very shortly. Well, you all know the judges are looking for damage and moments of damage, and Sean O'Malley has been pretty good at providing those over the last several years in the UFC. Sugar Sean O'Malley, ready to add to his appreciable legacy here tonight. the day for this Bantamweight Championship fight. We set it inside the octagon. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Marlon Chico Vera. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, presenting the winning, defending, undisputed UFC. Champion of the world, Sugar Sean O'Malley. All right, Herb Dean, third man You're in the right. octagon for this one. Ready. All right, Sean O'Malley and Chito Vera under the lights here tonight. Really dream matchup for the reasons in 35 pound fighters. And for Sean O'Malley, this has been a fight that he has wanted back in the first row. Promotion responded in kind. We'll see how it goes. It's a massive spot for both guys. The first thing that Sean O'Malley had to do when he got this fight was acknowledge. Acknowledge that on that night, Chito got the best of him. Then start a new and build a plan to allow for you to get your hand raised. How do you keep Chito at range? How do you use your, your distance management in order to allow for you to become victorious? That's going to be difficult anyway, but even more difficult dealing with the fact that Marlon Vera believes that he is just a better mixed martial artist. Beautifully timed and placed front kick there by the kickboxer, and that's going to allow him, I would think, to really maintain this range against the overall more well-rounded fight. I mean, yeah, he's in there with a guy that would seem to have more ways to win the fight. But if he stays at range here, kicking range, he's the best at that. So he needs to continue down this path, continue to throw those kicks straight at him and dart at him, poke at him to keep him at space so that he can fight his fight. Oh, nice body shot. We cross the midpoint in round one. Well, he keeps going back to the well with that left hand, just that way. Vera gets absolutely pelted by that head kick. 
And both fighters exchange in the pocket. Oh, that's gonna soften him up. Massive knee to the body. Well, now you see some visible damage on the side underneath the elbow. He told us he was gonna invest in the body, and he hasn't missed a whole lot tonight. He didn't expect him to do it this effectively. He's done a fantastic job of following the game plan. What a great job getting that kick to the target. And he lands that side kick. Beautiful jab there by the champ. That jab is fast. Look at that jab. Nice hook. That was a crippling shot right there. Threw it real tight. Elbow tight. Big check in it. Landed it right on the chin. Oh, and he tags him with the straight. Nice job there by Marlon Vera. Again going back to the jab just out of range. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights from those previous five minutes, DC, and uh, no padding, no glove on that foot. No glove, no padding, and look at the hip action when he throws those kicks. He's not only kicking just for feel, he's really trying to damage his opponent, and as the fight goes longer, you will start to see it taking effect. You ready to fight? Ready. All right, round two. Next round is now underway. I thought there was pretty good back and forth action in the previous round. Yes, it wasn't a far fight. It wasn't two guys throwing the kitchen sink at each other. But you did see times when it came together and you saw the skill level of these two fighters. He's throwing every part of himself into these big leg kicks. Oh, he lands another strike to the body, really starting to connect on a lot of shots to the midsection. And these will take their toll as this fight goes into the latter rounds. Nice execution on the team. sort of smell blood in the water and that was a point of I mean, blood's in the water. You gotta go get it. You gotta go find the finish. Oh, big diving punch lands up top. All right, half guard position for him here, and I can hear Dominic Cruz in the back of my head just screaming about underhooks somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. he loved, I mean, but he's right, right? He's so right in terms of if you're on your back in the half guard, one thing you can't be is flat on your back. You need to be up on an elbow. Right. You need to be half on the side, and you need to control the far side underhook. It is a battle for underhook when you're fighting in the half guard position on the back. There it is. Now he's on the mount. And look at him attacking the arm triangle on the other side. He's going to lock him down, try to pass all the way across his body. Once he gets across, he will start to drop his chest to the mat and chase the finish. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Vera's in half guard. All right, so he continues to land a high volume of strikes. He talked to us a lot about pace and pressure. And he has certainly kept up his end of the guard. I mean, the cardio is fantastic tonight. He is pushing at a level that we have not seen him fight before. This is shades of Colby Covington. Max Holloway, those guys that can fight all night. He is showing you that he has done the work in the training room, and it's on full display tonight. 30 seconds now to go in the round. Both fighters exchange in the pocket here. 
Well, he continues to offer up the kick here, but just misses with that one. And the horn sounds on round two. Heading back to the corner now after that round. Vera's bleeding from the forehead a little bit, so we'll keep an eye on that as the fight continues. Hopefully the cut man can do his work and get it under control so it doesn't bleed down into the fighter's eyes. All right, let's get you a replay from that previous round. It was the big knockdown courtesy of that kick that, that nearly closed the show for good. It almost closed the show, but nothing's more discouraging than when you get somebody hurt that bad and you don't shut the door. He has to go back to work now knowing that he's got about as tough a guy as, if, as he's ever had in front of him in the octagon tonight. Ready to fight. Ready. Go. Here we go, third round of this championship fight. Oh, nice job to land the front kick there by Sean O'Malley. Nice jab there by O'Malley. Oh, headshot bang as the high kick lands. Oh, strong punch there by O'Malley. He's hurt. Nice strike from the bottom fighter there. Might be a submission attempt here, champ. I mean, you cannot sit in a full guard. When you sit the full guard, you give these guys so many opportunities. Ferris back in full guard. Big ground and pound. Outstanding pressure from top position here by Marlon Vera. This is where he wants to be. We march on three minutes to go. Yes, smart adjustment, yep. Marlon Vera grounded pound from half guard now. Let's see if he can do some damage. How about that reversal by him there? Now he's going full mount. All right, so some high-level stuff there on the ground, but as they make their way back to the feet, a huge response from the crowd, no surprise there. I loved it. I loved all the grappling that was on display there, but lands a huge flying knee. Big shot lands for both guys. Well, you've got to admire the urgency here. He is trying to keep the judges out of it. Lighten up his opponent left and right. Just misses with the left hook. Slip that offering from his opponent. In the past, we've seen him sort of lean on the toughness. Tonight, he's leaning on the defense. And you see the evolution of the fighter in front of us. He doesn't have to be tough anymore. The four he can slip strike, the longer he can prolong his career. Vera's taking aim at that cut right now and hard to blame him, right? Might as well continue to target that area and see if you might get a referee or even a doctor to intervene here. O'Malley's nose is bleeding now. His opponent could be out of here soon, DC. He's almost done. And when you get hit with a shot like that, you don't know what to run, hide, grab, or wrestle. He's a, he, I mean, he's confused. He's as confused as he was on his first test in elementary school. Right. Entertaining scrap so far. All right, so there's the end of the round. Big story in this one now. The cut on the bridge of that nose from that strike. The cut man is in there. Should be able to shut this one and potentially prevent it from being a factor here moving forward. All right, so there's the end of the round. And on one side, thrill on the other agony after that knockdown. Yeah, he was able to really damage him with that big punch. You see the hands, the speed, how sharp he is, how technical he is. It allows him to land in spots where his opponent is winging punches. Great strike landed, great punch landed to put his opponent down. You ready to fight? You ready? All right, here is round four. Fight schedule for five five-minute rounds. All right, here we go. The
tension is palpable. Fourth round is underway. You've got a thing or two to say about these championship rounds. The fourth round is easily the hardest round in fighting. You're so used to fighting up to three. You gotta get back off of that stool. And this is a real test of your will and desire to wanna fight. Well, we got a lot of blood now, ladies and gentlemen. I think my mother just turned off the TV. But every time that area gets targeted, that cut is getting worse and closer, theoretically, to the end of the fight. Yeah, and, you know, when you got a person like this in front of you that is so good at what they do, when you are... Oh, look at that. He left up and landed the diving punch. Well, make no mistake about it, he is getting two paychecks tonight as he gets the big TKO victory. Wow. That's unbelievable. It, it was crazy to watch his finishing instincts on display as he got that massive victory. It, it was amazing, John. It was amazing. Bruce Buffer has your official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at one minute, 17 seconds of round number four. Declaring the winner by TKO. And still the undisputed UFC bantamweight champion of the world, Sugar Shaw. So the Sugar Show is in full effect here tonight as we congratulate Sean O'Malley and his MMA lab teammates, and you start to wonder.